Welcome to Worship with Holy Love Lutheran Church. On this final Sunday of Advent, as we prepare again for the coming of our Lord, we hear the song of Mary and the stories of how God is at work in our world through the highs and the lows. Join me as we confess our sin and appreciate God's forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you and our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. And in Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Light the candle as a symbol of the light that leads the way. For each candle is a symbol of the love that's ours today. Watch and wait for Christ's coming. We light candles of hope, peace, joy, and love remembering the promises of God with prayer. Hear these words from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child. She shall bear a son and name him Emmanuel. God is with us. We light this candle in hope. We light this candle in peace. We light this candle in joy. We light this candle in love. Let us pray. Loving Creator, today we gather in love as your beloved children. We yearn to welcome the Christ child as our own, to embrace him as kin. Help us to see your love in one another as we wait upon your coming. Light conquering darkness, love conquering fear. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. Amen. As we strike the match and light the wick of spirit shine bright, grant that all may see from the darkness your gift, Lord. Let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophets, that anointed by your Spirit we may testify to your light. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
The Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter, verses 26 to 38. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by, God's, by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child who will be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. A reading from Psalm 89. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David. I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. Then you spoke in a vision to your faithful one and said, I have set the crown on one who is mighty. I have exalted one chosen from the people. I have found my servant David. With my holy oil, I have anointed him. My hand shall always remain with him. My arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not outwit him. The wicked shall not humble him. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and steadfast love shall be with him, and in my name his horn shall be exalted. I will set his hand on the sea and his right hand on the rivers. He shall cry to me, You are my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Wait for the Lord whose day is near. Wait for the Lord, be strong, take heart. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This impromptu song of Mary's is known as the Magnificant. It's based on the first verb that Mary uses, magnify. Magnify like a magnifying glass. 
to enlarge and to look at in detail. Mary's song is meant to make God greater, greater than we think God already is. The earlier reading from today gave us the setting and the background for why the song came about. The angel Gabriel had just appeared to her saying, hey girl, um, if you're game, you're gonna go and become miraculously pregnant. And after a little back and forth on how that's gonna work out, Mary agrees. She agrees to become pregnant with the Christ child. And we don't know exactly how old Mary was when this happened. All we know is what we read here. She hadn't been married yet, she hadn't had sex, and she was engaged to a guy named Joseph. Based on these context clues, most scholars estimate that Mary was around 14 years old. To put that in modern times, that's about an eighth grader or a freshman in high school. Shockingly young, I know, but it was completely normal for the Roman Empire for this time period. And Joseph, her fiance, would likely have been in his early 20s. So we've got this clear indication and image of youth in Mary. She's the very beginning of her pregnancy, she's young, but in a strange juxtaposition, the angel Gabriel switches topics. After he tells Mary and Mary agrees to become pregnant, he then says, okay, so your older cousin Elizabeth, you know how she thought she was going through menopause? Turns out she's six months pregnant. The youth of Mary and early pregnancy with the established age and later pregnancy of her cousin Elizabeth. It's two different experiences, but on the same spectrum. But then when Gabriel ends their conversation, he concludes with an interesting statement. For nothing will be impossible with God. Your impossible pregnancy, Mary, and Elizabeth's highly unlikely one, all these show nothing is impossible with God. It's that concept that I want us to explore today. Nothing is impossible with God. This juxtapositions on how everything is about God. Mary then goes to see Elizabeth, and the in utero John the Baptist in Elizabeth's stomach moves when Mary comes near. Elizabeth takes this to be a sign that something special is going on with Mary, and that's why Mary starts singing this song. This song amplifying the Lord for all that God has done. And what is it that God has done? Once you get past the part where Mary talks about herself, remember she's a teenager, give her some grace, we hear through a series of dichotomies that the seemingly impossible things God has done. God's taken the ones who seem to be powerful and humbles them. The person who constantly seems to be on top, the bullies, the tyrants, the ones who think the rules don't apply to them, God brings them into submission. Not to other people, but to God's very self, because like we celebrated just a few weeks ago, Christ is king, remember? There's also the section of Mary's song where the rich are sent away empty. The rich, that is to say, the ones that have lots, are sent away to have nothing. It's unexpected, right? Again, the continued dichotomy, like youth and older age, the powerful and the powerless. But then one of the earlier things that Mary sings in her song deserves a bit more attention. God's done great things for me personally, but his mercy has continued for generations. It's an interesting blend of here and now, all about me, and acknowledging that his blessing is for everyone of all time, and has been throughout all time. But that surely is who God is. God is at work in each of our individual lives, personally communicating to each of us. But then at the same time, God is communicating to the world around us as a whole, unbounded by time. Throughout this Advent season this year, we've had images that have carried us through. The first week in our in-person service, we had an unexpected visual of what it was like to prepare for the coming of the baby Jesus. When my preschooler son inserted himself into every aspect of the worship service in order to be closer to mom. And that ended up being a representation of what I was trying to talk about in the sermon. Yes, as I was holding my kid. How we don't know everything about the future, like when Jesus is coming back exactly, but we do know the character of Jesus and the character of God. So as we wait for the second coming of Jesus, as we prepare again for the birth of Christ, we don't worry about the exact time, but instead rest assured in the nature of Christ, just like my son was resting assured in the nature of who his mom is in his life. Then the second week of Advent, we talked about stained glass, how that testifies to the light of Christ. The colors arranged to tell a story, one that words alone can't express. 
We talked about how for centuries churches used stained glass to tell the story of God, and how like John the baptizer, we too are to show God at work in the world. Or to use an image from this week's text, to magnify God in our world. Then last week, through song and music, we heard the story of God through the voices of our choir, and we joined along at times too. And God's love was proclaimed in a different way, a different medium, again, to our hearts. This week, the image that I want to leave you with involves the opposites that we talked about earlier in Mary's song. And the opposites are clear in the statue that I have of Mary and baby Jesus. It's in a corner of my office where I have a bunch of pictures of my family, like my kids and my nieces and my dog. But here's how I came to have the statue in the first place. And again, it's a story of opposites and dichotomies. One of the first congregations I served in the Chicago area was called St. Philip. St. Philip was over 100 years old by the time I got there, and it had always been Lutheran. But it had a really interesting pastoral history. Swedish immigrants brought Lutheranism with them, but over time, throughout their 100 plus years, their pastors were not Lutheran. They had an Episcopal priest for several years, and then for about 10 years, they had a Roman Catholic priest who was leaving the church in order to marry a woman. But by the time I arrived in 2018, their sanctuary had an interesting mix of all these visual traditions of Christianity. The statue of Mary and baby Jesus was one of them. It stood next to the pulpit, and I'd look at it before preaching, reflecting on what it visually represented, a mother's care to do what God has called her to do. When the congregation came to the decision to close, they weren't sure what they were going to do with the statue. So I volunteered to take on Mary and Jesus. Whenever we get to the Magnificat in Advent, or whenever the day scripture ends up talking about Mary, I think of this statue, and it brings with it a combination of joy and sorrow, that dichotomy again. Sadness remembering the people of St. Philip and the hard decision to close. The hard conversations about maintaining everything for a weekly worship of maybe 10 people was the best way to show God's love. And yet joy in remembering who those people were, the joy in how they made that hard choice, the way that God spoke even to the most stalwart amongst the group, the compassion that they showed to each other, and the way the congregation decided to gift its financial resources to start a new Lutheran ministry. It's that same dichotomy in Mary's song, the thing that Gabriel said, nothing is impossible with God. Joy in sorrow, sorrow in joy. This insanely hard, painful experience of closing a congregation did bring about a new gospel-driven life. For the most part, all the members went together to a new Lutheran church, and again, its finances went to start a new ministry in the Chicago area. Please allow me this one disclaimer. I am by no means hinting or saying or suggesting that holy love is about to take the route of St. Philip. I promise you, holy love is in a very different and far more vibrant place than St. Philip was. But I wanted you to know the story of how I got this statue, to appreciate that continued dichotomy that we see in Mary's song. It's the visual representation of what we talk about all of Advent, of waiting and hoping and realizing that God has done something incredible and unimaginable. The beautiful awe when we realize that God is indeed there. Our own Magnificants, our own life songs that speak to God at work in our world, are a study of opposites and dichotomies, of youth and established age, riches and deficits, powerful and powerless, unexpected abundance and longed for presence. So whatever opposites are going on in your life right now, the struggle to care for others and yourself, the fight for independence and wanting others involved, the desire to gift and yet to receive, the sorrow of loss and the joy of experienced love, all these opposites and seemingly polarized emotions and tensions are good. Because as Mary's song shows us, in Christ on earth, both happen. Nothing is impossible with our Lord. Through Christ, amen. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O holy favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus.
Jesus, the chosen one of God most high. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God. I live to do your will. My soul I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray together. Holy and almighty and merciful Lord, we give you thanks that you have gathered us here today in your love. Help us to sing songs of your work in this world. Help us to proclaim your love for all and how that you have spoken in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our teacher, we pray that for continued blessings upon our preschool and kindergarten. We ask for your grace as they move forward into a break. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our great healer, we pray for all who have need in mind, in body, or in spirit. We ask that you would surround each with your love, that you would grant them your provision. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Trusting that you hear us, knowing that you care, we lay our prayers before your throne of great grace, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all, and also with you. Please share a sign of God's peace amongst one another. Thank you for being part of Holy Love Lutheran Church and worshiping with us today. We invite you to continue to support our ministries and to keep us vital as we seek to live out God's love in the world. You can go to our website or click the QR code with your smartphone. We also invite you to give of your time and your talents. Consider being part of our online worship service for a reader or a singer. 
We invite you to be part of our community in person as well. However you are able to give, we thank you. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts towards those who hunger in any way that all may know your care and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Please lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church here on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, all of you. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper was over, he took the cup. Again, he gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Beloved of God, for as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord until he comes again. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. This is the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. All are welcome at Christ's table. Jesse's lineage call me. 
Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Receive the benediction. May Almighty God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, bless you now and forever. Amen. in royal David city stood a lowly cattle shed where a mother laid her baby in a manger for his bed Mary was that mother Go in peace, prepare the way. Thanks be to God.